This is described as the most advanced British aircraft ever built. A step change from current drones or even next generation jets. Tyrannus represents a massive investment in the future. The MOD is spending all this money on Tyrannus, £185 million so far, at a time that it's cutting back on operational frontline and crucially manned fast jets. That's not because Tyrannus is ever going to enter service with the RAF, certainly not as it is, but because the technology on board is deemed so significant that it could inform the design of the next generation of RAF drones. Flight testing Tyrannus has been a closely guarded secret until today, and it's been hard work getting to this stage. More than one and a half million man hours worth of effort has gone into and been invested in the programme. Uh, the result is the most technologically advanced aircraft the UK has ever designed and built. Most details remain shrouded in secrecy, but we do know that unlike most other drones, Tyrannus is jet powered. It's stealthy and includes new levels of autonomy the machine making decisions by itself. If you have sensors which can detect where the hostile entities are, you can automatically avoid them. And we already have that ability to do that within our, uh, the autonomous function of this vehicle. But um, it's, you have to be able to upload to the vehicle where the threats are, so you need to know those. In the future, you will be able to give sensors to the vehicle, so it will be able to detect a hostile radar, a hostile whatever, and will avoid it accordingly. For us, um, the, uh, the fact that aircraft are autonomous is not actually that new. There are many other aircraft that are already on the scene that actually have that capability, but it's about controlling the aircraft. It's not about controlling the mission. The mission is uh, commanded by the pilot, whether he's in the air or whether he's in the ground. Decisions are now being made about whether to take Tyrannis further and how it might fit into plans for a new Anglo-French drone. The Defence Technology Minister told me why he was prepared to spend money on something that may never see frontline service. Well, the MOD places a big emphasis on science and technology, uh, thinking forward many decades, as in this case. So we have a commitment to science and technology. We said in, uh, uh, in the Technology White Paper two years ago that we would commit to 1.2% of our budget. In fact, last year or next year, I think we're going to do a bit better than that. So this is part of a, a well-established practice in the MOD to, to think ahead, look forward to the next generation of capability and requirements and to start investing in it and that's what we're doing here with Tyrannus. Now uh, drones as the President of the United States would call them unmanned vehicles as I'm sure you'd prefer really are going to be a key part of any future um, capability obviously in the air for Tyrannus but I imagine some of this technology at least is applicable to, to other um, uh, battle spaces as well. Well uh, there's a lot of interest in uh, maintaining the, the, the human being within the command chain and setting the missions, but where we can take human beings out of the, uh, the threat environment from, for, as individuals. So uh, certainly in the air domain, we're starting to see uh, with, the, uh, with the Reaper system the use of uh, weaponized uh, unmanned air systems. Uh, this, of course, is, is a very early stage. It's a technology demonstrator, uh, but it, it may form part of the, uh, the future next generation air defense. That's what we're investing in and looking at. And we're also, in some other domains, looking at providing uh, unmanned capability as well. So we've just gone in uh, with, in the maritime domain with Scan Eagle is now in service uh, for the first time this year uh, to provide uh, surveillance and situational awareness. Uh, in the maritime domain and of course we have other uh, situational uh, awareness capability in the land domain as well uh, but we're not as advanced in terms of, uh, of weaponizing any of those systems. Is there a risk here of creeping autonomy? I mean clearly this, the, the electronics, the computers on board Tyrannus are, are, are far in advance of anything else um, and there's got to be a temptation hasn't there to automate more and more because the pilot is so long away it takes so long for his instructions to reach it simple things, fine, but there's a risk, isn't there, that that could eventually, perhaps not with Tyrannus, but eventually start to involve mission systems? I, I think we're in the, in the world of fantasy here. This is... What we, there is no conception of the British Armed Forces uh, engaging in autonomous capability which has no human interface. We are going to set the missions, that's what we do at the moment, that is our doctrine, that will be the doctrine for the foreseeable future. Unless robots were to take over the world, which is, which is you know, where your, the, your question is trying to, to lead me, I think this is you know, for, the, for the movies, not for reality.